Oh, what's up fellow nerds? I'm your host Dr. McKay and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be continuing the trend of breaking down Lantian devices with today's being the secret Atero device built by the Lantian Janus. In this video, I'll briefly cover Janus and do a deep dive into the Atero device and even give my thoughts on if the device would have changed the outcome of the war. But before we get started though, if you like the content, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe for more. But with that said, uh, let's -a go. So to begin this breakdown, we must first learn about the Lantian Janus. Janus was a Lantian that lived in Atlantis 10,000 years ago in the Pegasus Galaxy. He was a well-known and brilliant scientist within the Lantian community. He created many inventions, some of which were considered unorthodox and frowned upon by the main Lantian Council, with some of his inventions being outright banned by them. However, Janus took great pride in his discoveries and inventions and continued his work behind the back of the council in secret, creating a hidden laboratory within the city of Atlantis. Janus would work in secret on many of his projects that the council deemed unorthodox and controversial. Some of his secret inventions would be the Time Machine Puddle Jumper, later used by the Atlantis Expedition and the SGC a reality warping supercomputer that could be used to change history revealed in the novel Mirror Mirror, a personal cloaking device, time pods, an experiment into slowing the aging process of the lanterns and humans which led to the creation of the Wraith, revealed in the novel From the Depths and Secrets, and the last one we know of is the Atero device, Janus's last attempt to beat the Wraith. There is possibly loads more inventions and other projects Janus worked on in secret and in the eyes of the council, but we don't know. Janus had a brilliant mind, but he let his ego get the better of him. He let his mind create and do science without thinking about whether or not he should, and in doing so was responsible in full or in part for many consequences of his actions and technology. Let's just take the time machine puddle jumper as an example. He created it against the wishes of the council for what purpose is unknown, but it allowed for the Atlantis expedition in the future to use it and travel back in time to just before the Lanteans left Atlantis, allowing for Dr. Weir to inform the council of what happened in the future. This information changed the timeline as Janus would change history by making sure Atlantis will survive and rise from the ocean floor when the Atlantis expedition arrives. This specific consequence of his technology, good or bad, forever changed the Pegasus Galaxy, allowing for the Tal Reed to continue on and proceed to turn the Pegasus Galaxy on its head. Janus would evacuate Atlantis and later rebuild his time machine in the Milky Way Galaxy, and after that, he ascended. He later, as an ascended being, revealed the truth of the Wraith's origins to an ascended Dr. Weir, who later told Taylor in a dream who would then later confirm the truth from the Wraith Queen Death in the novel Secrets, adding to the list of huge consequences of Janus's projects. So now we know a bit about Janus and his lack of restraint when it comes to science, let's dive into this video's topic of the Atero device. Ten thousand years ago in the Pegasus Galaxy, during the Lantean War with the Wraith, Janus, a Lantean scientist behind the backs of the Lantean High Council, in secret, developed a device to help end the war with the Wraith. This device, called the Atero device, was a device that was capable of disrupting the subspace frequency associated with the Wraith hyperdrives, causing any Wraith ship that was to pass through a hyperspace window to be destroyed. Janus developed this device on a remote planet in secret, with the plan to prevent the Wraith from moving around the galaxy, allowing for the Lanterns to pick them off one by one. However, there was a severe side effect to the device. But before we get into that, how does the device work? Firstly, let me explain what subspace is in Stargate.
So subspace is an extra dimensional plane or alternate dimension separate from normal space. It allows for faster than light travel without breaking the laws of physics. And there are many layers of subspace with different frequencies. Picture a sheet of paper as being our own universe's space time bound by the laws of physics. Then take another piece of paper and place it just over the first, but not touching, that doesn't follow the laws of physics. That's subspace. It covers the same area as our universe, just slightly off in a different dimension, and with many, many layers. So picture the subspace paper having multiple sheets, each with its own frequency, and this allows us to use the separate dimension to get around the limit of light speed. Hopefully you guys understood that explanation. It's how I understand what subspace is, even if I butchered some science. The uses of subspace in Stargate range from Stargate travel, hyperspace travel, and subspace communications. Subspace allows for instant communication between star systems and allows the Stargate's wormholes to be formed, allowing for instant travel. Ships, on the other hand, have to open a hyperspace window into subspace and fly through into the alternate dimension. This process of opening the window requires immense power, but once through the window, they can travel faster than light using sublight engines. And the more efficient the drive and power, the faster they can travel in that dimension. And because subspace is separate from our own space time, it does not interact with normal space, allowing ships and wormholes to pass through planets and stars, allowing for basically straight line travel. You guys still with me? Right, so the Altera device takes the frequency of the subspace dimension that the Wraith use and sends a signal into it, causing it to be unstable. So when a Wraith ship opens up a hyperspace window, the window is unstable and causes the ship to basically disintegrate into a million pieces upon entry. So this would essentially block access to faster than light travel for the Wraith, and given space is very vast, it would prevent the Wraith from moving around the galaxy, thus starving them and allowing for the Lanteans who use a different subspace frequency in their hyperdrives to travel and engage stranded ships and slowly wipe the Wraith out. Sounds like the perfect device. But oh wait, remember that severe side effect I mentioned earlier? Well, it's a big one. So 10,000 years ago, Upon completion of the Altera device, Janus ran a three-day test of its function, and at first, the test ran as expected, destroying Wraith ships jumping into hyperspace. All looked well, but then suddenly, the unforeseen side effects showed and Janus immediately shut the device down. It's unclear on if he tried to solve the issue, but the risks of the side effects were too great even for Janus. He took the control key for the device to work back to Atlantis, where he remained until the evacuation. But what was the side effect? Well, short answer is, it blew up Stargates. But I like to break it down for you. So the Wraith's technology is mostly derived from Lantian technology, with the Wraith developing their own technology from that. One of which was the studying of the Stargate. The Wraith studying of the Stargate allowed them to derive their hyperspace technology from the same subspace frequency as the Stargates. So when Janus came up with the idea to disrupt the subspace frequency of the Wraith's hyperdrive, whether it was an oversight or ignorance on Janus's part, he didn't make the connection until the device was being tested. And so when the device was on, any Stargate that dialed out, as soon as it activated, it would immediately begin building energy up behind the event horizon and begin charging the Stargate up to the point of an overload and caused the Stargate to explode with the force of a dozen nuclear warheads. This side effect must have been devastating to any planet that dialed the Stargate and so Janus shut the device down and left the project abandoned. It's unclear if the Lantean Council knew about the project and would even sanction it with the side effects or would it even end the war, but Janus didn't want to risk the Stargates and thus never went back. The planet would remain lost for thousands of years until it was later discovered by the Veneer. In 2008, 
Dr. Daniel Jackson visited Atlantis and with McKay's help discovered Janice's secret laboratory and inadvertently activated a homing beacon on the control key for the Aterra device. This beacon alerted the Veneer, a group of Asgard who left the Ida Galaxy to find a cure for their genetic degradation. They became stuck in the Pegasus Galaxy after the Wraith beat the Lanteans and then destroyed the Veneer's intergalactic ships, stranding the Veneer in the Pegasus Galaxy. The Veneer hid themselves on a toxic world, hiding away for centuries until they needed to leave. They soon discovered the facility housing the Atero device and learned what the device could do. But unable to activate it, they only could study it until the console lit up, revealing the location of the control key on Atlantis. They immediately stormed Atlantis and stole the key and captured McKay and Jackson. They, took, they then took them to the facility and forced McKay to activate the device. McKay, not knowing of the side effects and being forced, activated the Atero device. With the Atero device now on and disrupting subspace, the effects of the device was seen when two Wraith cruisers entered hyperspace and were destroyed. And just as McKay learned of the side effects, he was stunned by the veneer before turning off the device. Shortly after, Atlantis dialed the Stargate and saw the side effects firsthand as the Stargate overloaded and exploded. But Atlantis sustained minimal damage as they used the city shield to contain the explosion. However, at least one other Stargate exploded. This Stargate was on the new Traveler's colony and the resulting explosion destroyed the settlement and the Traveler's Lantean warship that was landed on the surface. The Travelers then traveled to Atlantis to seek answers and then subsequently traveled to the planet with the Atero device. Meanwhile, on the planet, McKay informs Daniel of the side effects and Daniel then speaks to the Veneer to urge them to shut the device down. However, the Veneer did not care. They don't use the Stargates and thus consider it an unacceptable loss to contain the Wraith. The Veneer only care about themselves. The following events would see the device destroyed, but it is never shown how many Wraith ships and Stargates were destroyed in the duration the device was on. The Otero device was an endgame solution, but it came at a cost too great for Janus, but the Veneer had no problem with it. And if the device was left on, the destruction to the galaxy would have been catastrophic. Mr. Woolsey made the right call in destroying the facility to prevent it from ever being used again. So now I have given you the history and the breakdown of the Atero device. Let's discuss my opinion on if the device could have won the war with the Wraith. So it's complicated, but I think it would have prolonged the war and maybe just maybe ended it. But it would require certain factors. First is the Lantean Council knowing about the device and its side effects and planning accordingly to prevent Stargates being used. They could have shut down the gate network and run the device. This would isolate the Wraith and allow the Lanterns to rebuild and attack the Wraith in their own time. However, this would take time given the low resources of the Lanterns at the end of the war and the, and the fact that Stargates made traveling around the galaxy quicker. I believe if the Lanterns took the gate network offline, they could have at least lasted longer, but due to the secrecy of the project, this would never work. And even if the project was sanctioned by the council, it still is a Hail Mary, as it was too late for the Atlantis. The Wraith were already everywhere, a laying siege to Atlantis. The resources of the Lanterns in ships and war material was basically spent. And even if they could prevent the Wraith from using hyperspace, they were still everywhere. It would require the Lanterns to somehow fight off the Wraith in orbit, which they could not do anyway. And without the use of the Stargates, the Lanterns would be trapped. So at the end of the day, the Altera device wouldn't, would have changed nothing. The war was already lost. Now, if the Altera device was made in the early days of the war, yes, I do believe it probably would have won the war because it would have prevented the Wraith from expanding allowing for the Lanterns to prepare and wait the Wraith out. And it wouldn't have mattered if the Stargates were offline, as the Lanterns had many ships in the early days and the ability to make more. So in my opinion, looking at all of the evidence, 
No, the Atari device would not have ended the war if used when it was made. However, if it was made at the start of the war, I believe with the right conditions, it would have prevented the Wraith from expanding and would allow the Lanteans time to come up with a way to end the Wraith before the war became lost. But these are my thoughts. What do you think? Please leave a comment below with your thoughts. So there we go, my fellow nerds. This has been a breakdown of the Atara device. Janus has always fascinated me in the show, and I would have loved to see more flashbacks and more of his technology in the show. But the novels do do a good job in expanding the lore, and I do recommend reading the novels. Some of the novels I recommend are Mirror Mirror, From the Depths, and Secrets, and the seven-part legacy novel series of Homecoming, The Lost, Allegiance, The Furies, Inheritors, Unascended, and The Third Path. These stories take place during and after Stargate Atlantis and are licensed by MGM and are considered soft canon to the overall lore expanded in the Stargate universe. And although the novels are not hard canon, being placed in separate continuities as the novels sometimes contradict the show's established canon, I like the stories and I include them into my videos and fit them into the canon as best I can with the overall universe as I believe the novels have a place in the larger lore because they follow the <clears throat> because they follow the show's stories and characters and as a fan of all things Stargate the novels and extended material are as much a part of Stargate universe as any other and I will continue to include them in my content and I hope you all enjoyed the additional information I provide as well in my videos, as it opens up more stories to be told. And if you did enjoy my content, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe for more. And with that said, I have been your host, Dr. McKay. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers and goodbye and thank you for watching. Bye!